Guys, Bots and Gossip here coming to you on a bank holiday Saturday. Going to do a video on Jarrell Miller. Now, we discussed Jarrell Miller um, during the podcast this week. Uh, but at the time of discussing it, I hadn't actually seen the fight. I found it very, very difficult to track down footage of the fight. Um, I've now been able to catch up and actually watch the fight. And I wanted to come back and discuss Jarrell Miller in a bit more detail. Jarrell Miller is an interesting character. And he's a guy who's definitely going to generate interest in the sport. Number one, he's an excellent talker. Number two, he carries power and he's knocking people out. Um, and number three, he's a guy who really appears like he's coming to fight. Massive guy, kickboxing background, appears to have an excellent, excellent chin. Uh, I think it was Hatman who did a video the other day talking about his chin from the kickboxing days. And Hatman, for me, had it nailed there. Another superb video from that channel. Um... But yeah, Jerome Miller, let's let's get into it. So he weighed in for this fight at 21 stone. Now, when I tuned in to watch the fight, I expected to see him looking disgustingly fat. If I'm honest, I expected to see him looking like Derek Chisora, the first time Derek Chisora fought Tyson Fury. But no, Jerome Miller has that big a frame that he can actually weigh in at 21 stone and not actually look massively obese. I mean, don't get me wrong, he wasn't exactly body beautiful, Anthony Joshua style abs. Um, but then again, you don't need to be to be a heavyweight success. He was 21 stone, and in the fight, even though it was only a three round fight, he displayed high punch output. He seemed to have a good engine. There wasn't obvious signs of him being gassed. And that makes him a threat. You know, in the heavyweight division, they're all big guys. But Jarrell Miller at 21 stone is going to be 5 or 6 stone heavier than some of the heavyweights out there. If Jarrell Miller in future fought David Hay or Deontay Wilder, for example, I expect he could potentially have a 4 stone, 5 stone advantage. Let's not forget what that can actually do in a fight. You know, I know we're talking the heavyweight division here, but imagine if we were talking just two men in any other division with that much of a weight gap. Of course, it matters slightly less when you're 17, 18 stone to begin with, but Jarrell Miller... Massive, massive, massive man. And, uh, you know, if he can bring that sort of weight advantage into fights and not have um, a low engine, not have a low output as a result, he's a dangerous, dangerous operator. Now, in this fight against Fred Cassie, and we know Fred Cassie, we know he's a very awkward, durable type guy. Uh, Miller comes out, and for me, he is... Trying to box like a Floyd Mayweather, James Tony, Adrian Broner. He's obviously been watching footage of those kind of guys. So he comes out, he's got his shoulder up high, he's got his head back, and he's trying to work the jab. So he's kind of doing all of this, trying to do the shoulder roll type stuff. This is just the early round. And at first I thought, okay, this is really interesting. Because a heavyweight with defensive awareness with his shoulder, and a heavyweight who's fighting behind the jab... At 21 stone, it's going to be a threat to most people out there. The problem with Jarrell Miller, uh, and this may relate to his weight, is the frightening lack of pace. And when I say lack of pace, lack of speed, foot speed, hand speed, reflexes, the guy is just a slow guy. A slow, slow, slow guy. So he's coming out, he's coming to the centre of the ring, and he's throwing a jab like this. The problem is, is that Fred Cassie, who in himself is hardly the snappiest heavyweight out there, is quite literally, at times in the first and second rounds of this fight, able to avoid the slow Jarrell Miller jab, and before Jarrell Miller pulls his hand back to his chin, is able to come over the top with a sort of looping haymaker. And you know how Cassie throws punches. Cassie is hardly a sort of down-the-centre snappy guy, you know. Cassie is a wild, looping haymaker thrower. And he's catching Jerome Miller. He's catching Jerome Miller multiple occasions. Now, the good news is Jerome Miller's got a good chin, and he, at no stage, was worried. But Fred Cassie's not the biggest guy. He's not the hardest-hitting guy. And the concern is, if Fred Cassie is able to counter you with that much ease, what could a guy like David Hay, what could a guy like the main Stavern do to you? Um... That is a concern for Jarrell Miller, that defensive frailty, either because he may get found out as he steps up against the bigger punchers, or just because it's going to be very, very easy to catch scoring punches against him. You know, even if you're not knocking him out, even if his chin is that good that he can take the punishment, you, know, you land a big right hand on him, that's a scoring punch, that's a punch the judge is going to remember. So, 
I don't believe I'm saying this, but Jerome Miller, the way he fights, I'm not sure that coming out and doing this stylish solo roll jab really plays to his strengths. I think fundamentally he's a bit slow and throwing the jab, trying to box, trying to play chess from long reins may not actually suit his strengths. Cassie, most people would say, I believe, actually won the first round of this fight based on the fact that he was able to avoid some of Jerome Miller's work and counter him. In the second and third rounds, we see Jerome Miller start to raise the pace. We see him start to scrap. We see him start to come forward, force the action, and throw heavy lever. It's not necessarily pretty. It's not the most technically astute work. It's not the most eye-catching single punches, but damn, it's effective. And if you look at this fight, he really wears Fred Cassie down. Now, Fred Cassie retires at the end of the third round with some sort of injury. I believe it's a hand injury. Uh, but I think Jerome Miller somewhat broke his will by the way Jerome Miller sat on him and the way Jerome Miller kind of forced himself upon Fred Cassie and, and dominated the action. What we're talking about here is someone who closed down the reins and at times clubbed his opponent to submission. You know, it may sound basic, but sometimes if you're a 21 stone man with a good engine and you hit very, very hard, you don't necessarily need to be playing around with the jab and that sort of thing. Let's say Jerome Miller got a fight against Anthony Joshua. And that's not out of the question, by the way, because Jerome Miller is ranked in the IBF. He has got momentum. He has got a big mouth, uh, which could build a fight. And obviously, Anthony Joshua is looking to build his profile in the States. Let's say Jerome Miller got a fight with Anthony Joshua. Anthony Joshua, I believe, schools him in a boxing match. Anthony Joshua, I would assume, has, is a much taller man with better range, better reach. His jab is a lot quicker. His jab is a lot snappier. Uh, if Jerome Miller comes out and he starts doing all of this solar roll jab thing against Anthony Joshua, at best, he's going to get out jabbed. More realistically, Joshua is going to do what we've seen him done several, several times. He's either going to slip the jab and land that big right hand, or he's going to try and catch one of his jab and throw a right hand like we saw him doing, uh, I don't know, Kevin Johnson fight, Charles Martin fight, time and time again. Jerome Miller, for me, doesn't have a chance against Anthony Joshua and will be exposing himself to an inordinate amount of risk adopting that game plan. Hopefully he can learn from that, from the Fred Cassie fight. But if he walks Anthony Joshua down, if he straight away abandons the boxing, if he closes the reins and is able to put Joshua on the ropes and sit on his chest and unload at 21 stone like he did against Fred Cassie, Really, I think that could be a very, very tall order for Anthony Joshua to deal with that. You're going to need a fighter with either superb defence, superb inside game, or superb movement in order to stay away from Gerald Miller. And there aren't too many heavyweights in the division who do that. So, in summary, um, and this goes against 99% of the fighters that I talk about when I talk about areas for improvement for them and how I'd like to see them fight. In summary, if I look at Jerome Miller, I actually think he's got to abandon the jab. I think he's too slow and a bit too crude to fight in that methodology. I think he's got to scrap. I think he's got to suffocate. I think he's got to uh, punish and brutally stalk opponents and hammer them into submission by sitting on their chest. Um, you know, that's how I would like to see him operate. And if he does that, I think he's got a life chance in most fights. Fighters that I think could cause him real problems, movers, guys like Brian Jennings, Kubrat Pulev, who can dance around the ring, who'd have a speed advantage over him, who'd have a technique advantage with him. If fighters like Brian Jennings, Kubrat Pulev could keep the distance, I think they could probably school Jarrell Miller from range. And the question is, would Jarrell Miller, after several rounds, be able to keep up with someone who's dancing around the ring and making him miss with the weight? You know, that's question number one. Um... Those sort of guys would cause him problems. Uh, fighters with huge one-punch knockout power who can counter punch, likes of a David Hay, an Anthony Joshua, a Bermain Stavern. Those guys are potential risks for Jarrell Miller as well. Uh, you know, movers, counter punchers, those guys he's going to struggle with. You know, funnily enough, I know this was a career heaviest for Jarrell Miller. I know Jarrell Miller could maybe lose twenty pounds and get himself into a bit better shape. I'm not 100% sure necessarily that would make the difference. You know, Jerome Miller is a huge, huge, heavy set guy. 
He's 21 stone. Let's say he came in at 19 stone. Let's say he lost 30 pounds, you know. Uh, I don't think he'd be moving like, you know, um, Luis Ortiz or Bryant Jennings in there. I just don't see him as a, um, a speedster. Uh, let's say he lost that weight. I don't see him jabbing like Kubrat Pulev or like uh, Vladimir Klitschko. I don't think he's got that in his game. I actually think he's a tank of a man. Uh, he's going to dominate you if you let him come forward and sit on you. And I actually think, in a bizarre way, um, him adopting brawler tactics, him coming in heavy and positioning and enforcing his weight advantage on opponents, will probably see him to his most effectiveness. And you know, nine times out of ten with heavyweights, I'm saying they need to lose a few pounds. They need to work behind the jab. But Jerome Miller, for me, I've got different thoughts on him. Let me know your thoughts here, people. What was your take on the fight? How impressed were you? What's his potential upside? You know, mixed opinions on Jerome Miller. Some people telling me he's useless. Some people telling me he could go all the way. So, what's your opinion? Do leave your comments below. Uh, if you've enjoyed this video, please hit the thumbs up button. That will help me spread this to a wider audience. And if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed before for whatever reason, please do take the time to hit the subscribe button um, so you can check out some of my other stuff as I film it this week. Many thanks for watching, guys. Appreciate it.